greetings and salutations it is i mr nothing the museum curator of the weird and the strange in the host who might be a ghost welcome back to around the weird a booktube channel where i talk about all manner of strange and unusual literature that i have found in my travels today i want to talk about a book that i love that i, I consider one of my top 10 favorites um, if you're counting, I've listed I've listed three off um, in other videos, so uh, go find those. But uh, it's one of my top ten favorites. It's about zombies. Um, I am of course talking about World War Z by Max Brooks. World War Z: An Oral History of the Zombie War, uh, which is always always a fun title. Uh, I've I first read this book uh, in my undergrad about probably about ten years ago now. Um, I revisit it, and every time I find out something new about it, I discover something new um, that I maybe hadn't noticed before, uh, and that, that holds true this time, probably because of current events. Uh, so without further ado, I'll, I'll summarize it a bit. I probably won't be able to talk about all of it because there's just so much that goes on in this book, and I, I don't want to spend like 30 minutes talking about this book. I will, but not on camera. <laughs> um, so... Uh, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll briefly summarize it, try to briefly summarize, and then uh, I'll, uh, I'll provide a little analysis with some things I picked up on. So uh, World War Z starts uh, in China. It doesn't have any particular protagonist. It takes place after the fact, uh, as told through um, uh, a UN interviewer going around to different countries, uh, picking up stories. Um, it's a fact-finding mission, but he discovers that there's more to the story, so he ends up writing this book. Um, you know, uh, a fictional book about uh, what happened during the, the, the World War Z, um, the zombie war. Uh, so, um, this, so there's no particular protagonist, and by extension there's no exact plot to it there's just a series of events a timeline if you will um that i'll try to you know again describe here uh so it starts in china um an unnamed or not an unnamed but a doctor uh travels to a village and discovers that there's this weird disease that makes um the sufferers uh kind of die and then come back and um uh they they react they want to bite the uh, bite people around them even former family members they react pretty poorly and there's a lot of people who are you know scared of these sufferers uh, the doctor contacts one of his friends because he hasn't seen anything like this before uh, and the the friend reacts pretty terribly and says everything's gonna be fine they're coming we're 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 gonna figure this out uh, so the friend sends the Chinese government uh, where they take away the sufferers and basically lock things down uh, but the government doesn't tell anybody else about it uh, they they urge everyone to keep quiet if they threaten them uh, um, over the course of the next several months the Chinese government sees more outbreaks but they do everything in their power to keep keep it under wraps they start throwing out distractions into the world uh by keeping their messages kind of coded but not really coded um and starting you know uh conflicts uh especially in the taiwan strait that that's hinted at but it's never really revealed what exactly it is uh basically stuff to keep foreign governments occupied and not notice what's going on in china but the virus does end up spreading outwards through human trafficking and the black market. Uh, the it spreads to South America, uh, South Africa, um, and the Middle East. Um, soldiers in the Middle East end up discovering, um, and in Asia, end up discovering uh, suffer uh, uh, this human disease. Uh, and some soldiers are attacked and they manage to fight it off, but the government wants, um, the American government wants the soldier to keep quiet. So everywhere around the globe, governments are doing their best to keep everyone quiet and under wraps. Israel is the only one that um, that is uh, going public with their plan to quarantine uh, in terms of uh, inviting Palestine within their borders and then putting up a wall to make sure that nobody gets out. But this this angers the Orthodox uh, Jews in, in the country and they launch a civil war. So that's not going so well for Israel. Um, 
the U.S. has a couple of outbreaks that happen in rural areas and, and small cities at first, and the government, again, keeps it under wraps. But they're ignoring uh, the advice of experts and a bunch of reports that are coming out that suggest that this could be an, an incredibly deadly virus. Uh, uh, there's um, a lot of blame that's shifted around after the fact about who's responsible for that. Uh, but a lot of the time, it's it's just the, um, the U.S. government didn't want to spend the money and they didn't want to worry anybody, especially if this turned out to be not a big problem. So um, this eventually boils over, spilling into suburbs and major cities. Uh, entire nations start crumbling as they feel uh, the overrun of zombies as this disease starts spreading. Uh, uh, things aren't going well. And this, this, uh, this reaches its peak uh, in Yonkers, New York, when the American government tries to make a stand and a show of force to ease the worries of uh, its citizens. However, that does not go well. And one of the best chapters of any book that I've ever read, um, Todd Wino, a soldier, describes how everything just goes south, how the overwhelming firepower and strategic maneuvers don't don't really amount to a hill of beans up to, against these zombies uh, because the weapons are, you know, outdated for this war and the equipment just, it doesn't hold up. So uh, the United States slowly falls and this forces um, many countries to start retreating. Uh, in South Africa, they developed the Redeker Plan, uh, which is a strategy by which uh, the government retreats. They leave behind a few select cities, uh, well-stocked and well-ammoed, well to make sure that uh, they can fend off the zombie and sort of serve as a distraction for the zombies while the government uh, develops new plans, new strategies, and gains more resources and can effectively handle the situation. Uh, South Africa is the first to develop that plan under Paul Rediger, um, a, uh, a relic of the apartheid government. Uh, the United States moves to the Rockies and Japan abandons the, the, the island and heads to Korea. And uh, Russia even starts to do the same, but this results in a, a mutiny by the, uh, by the Russian soldiers. And the government responds by basically forcing uh, a, a number of the soldiers to kill the other soldiers. Uh, uh, to teach them a lesson, and um, that's it's pretty terrible for for Russia right there. Some of the um, uh, citizens in these uh, country and these little stronghold areas feel that they've been abandoned by the military, and rightfully so, because that is exactly what the government is doing to them, um, and it forces a little bit of stress on on the leaders who are doing this because they they want to save these people, but they know that they can't if the whole of civilization is to survive. Um, so the government uses this time to develop new strategies, new weapon systems, new, uh, new equipment, um, new ways of fighting the zombie menace, uh, and it's, it's overall pretty successful. There's a lot of progress to be made um, in fending off the zombie attacks. Uh, um, eventually, over um, an unspecified period of time, there's no exact timeline, but over time, uh, it gets to a point where the world leaders are ready to meet again, and they uh, they hold the Honolulu Conference, which is a UN meeting, where the American president suggests that it's enough, it's not enough to simply beat the uh, zombies to a stalemate. We have to go on the attack. We have to reclaim the land that is rightfully ours. Uh, so, uh, despite some objections from many, uh, some of the countries, most of the UN decides to to enact this, and the various countries um, began uh, an attack, an assault. The United States marches to the Atlantic, killing the zombies, and then they march to New York, which they renamed the Hero City, uh, and um, they managed to reclaim most of the United States. The same goes for Japan, the same goes for Russia, the same goes for uh, the United Kingdom, who does it slowly but surely, but they, over time they are able to uh, reclaim what is rightfully theirs in, in their eyes. Uh, and it's, it's not without a lot of casualties um, or even a lot of stress and trauma, uh, but they managed to get it done. Um, so, but at the end of this book now, um, where the uh, interviewer leads us, uh, leaves us. Um, this this war is still kind of ongoing. Iceland hasn't been recovered yet. Um, there's still a lot of zombies on the ocean floor, uh, and not every uh, country has been liberated from the zombies. So there's still quite a bit of work to do, and uh, there's always that ongoing threat that another outbreak could happen. Uh, so, but there are a number of changes. Russia has become a theocracy now. Uh, America is a bit more socialist. 
And Cuba has become a capitalist haven uh, for various businesses, uh, most, mostly in part due to all the people who were arriving on boat during the beginning of the, the zombie outbreak. So um, that's about where the story ends. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's a lot to, lot to talk about and a lot to analyze. Um, I think in future videos, I will, um, I'll, I'll talk about specific stuff, <laughs> talk about specific stuff related to uh, World War Z, um, but I won't, I won't go into all of it right now because again, we'd be here forever. Um, so um, one thing I want to talk about is how this fictional pandemic uh, mirrors a uh, mirrors actual pandemics and even the current COVID-19 pandemic that we are currently in. Uh, even though it's uh, a zombie outbreak, it's still referred to as a pandemic. Like the zombie, uh, the zombie state of being a zombie is a disease uh, by as medically defined in this book. Uh, so the uh, the in this book the pandemic starts in China and China tries to keep it under wraps before it slowly spreads overseas and kills people and then uh, it makes its way to America eventually and America is unprepared for it. They haven't listened to experts. They uh, um, they they have done their best to try to stifle it um, and keep it quiet as much as they can. But ultimately, uh, um, a reporter breaks the news that the country is in no way prepared, and this sparks a great panic. Uh, you might even say that um, some people have started buying uh, toilet paper in bulk, even though they probably won't be needing that toilet paper pretty soon. Hmm. Mm. Anyways, um, as I just described this, you can see how it kind of mirrors the current state we're in, uh, where, you know, a country views the pandemic as a weakness, so they're trying to keep it on the quiet so they, they don't appear weak to other countries, um, especially if it gets out and they don't want to be blamed for it. Uh, so you can kind of see how um, in China kind of mirrors what happened actually in China uh, the, um, in our current reality. Um, in the story, um, the American government uh, isn't isn't in a rush to actually uh, spend money and resources fighting the uh, pandemic initially, uh, which proves to be a disaster. Um, they even note that um, they they got in a in a tiff about other uh, pandemics in the past or other diseases, other potential uh, problems in the past, but they turned out to be nothing. And so they don't want their administration to look stupid uh, panicking about this one uh, because it, 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 it wouldn't look good for them. Uh, and if you're thinking about it, like if, if you're right about it not amounting to nothing, this, this behavior is justified. But if you're, if you're not right about this and this turns out to be a worldwide plague that kills millions of people, guess what? You did something morally reprehensible. It's it's not good. It's it's really bad. And so like in this in this book, like the government not reacting in time, they're culpable. They're responsible for all these millions of deaths. Um, and you can apply the same logic to COVID nineteen. So I really like how um, in the reading it this time around. Um, uh, before before I had read when I had read it before before the pandemic, I didn't really latch onto that. And I thought it was maybe a little bit silly um, that that's how the pandemic would spread. But reading it now, like I, I get it. I get it. Absolutely. And that's probably absolutely what Max Brooks was going for. So like kudos to him for understanding the nature of pandemics. Uh, he's a quality writer um, uh, in terms of, you know, writing style, but also uh, doing research like that. Um, another thing I want to talk about is the nature of change. Uh, change has to happen both on a national scale and an individual scale for, in this book. Uh, on a national scale, uh, countries need to change and adapt their strategies. The United States tried what, what had uh, been done before, what worked best before uh, in Yonkers, and they got their ass kicked. Uh, so they had to try new military strategies. They had to change how their uh, economy worked. They had to change a whole bunch of things to make sure that they could survive in this new, new world that came about as a result of this disease. Um, so, and the United States is not the only country that changed. Cuba changed, uh, Russia changed, Japan changed, Korea changed. Uh, North Korea actually decided uh, we're, we're going to avoid this virus by hiding in a bunker. And it's unknown at the end of the book if, if, if they're still alive or if they've all been turned into zombies. So that's pretty worrying. Uh, but change also has to happen on an individual scale. Uh, at a couple points in, in this um, story, uh, uh, 
characters note that they had to change in order to become, in order to accept what had happened. They had to become harder. They had to think um, more logically. Uh, uh, one character even notes that they had to become okay with murder because they viewed killing a zombie as the equivalent of murder. Um, and now they think that, oh, well, I guess I'm, I guess I'm okay with murdering another person now. And that's kind of worrying for them. Uh, and so a lot of characters speculate that the, the human species has changed greatly as a result of this disease. But one character notes that it's the change is, is minuscule compared to what happened to the planet, how a large parts of it were on fire or hit with nuclear bombs at several points because countries were bombing each other. And so one character says, so the next time someone tries to tell you about how the true losses of this war are, are our innocence or part of our humanity, he spits into the water. Whatever, bro, tell it to the whales. Because um, the whales are now extinct because of, uh, of overfishing. Uh, so it's interesting that not all changes have been good. And there's a scale on, like, not just for humans, but or there's a change not just for humans, but for the whole planet. Uh, this zombie war has changed things for the better, for the worse. That's left up to you. Um, finally, the last thing I want to mention is how the ending is optimistic or pessimistic depending on how you view uh depending on your perspective you could say it's optimistic because humanity survived the zombie war um, and although there are still a few zombies out there uh, the humanity has the tools to deal with this issue now uh, and everyone's working together to assure that society is better off uh, so there's a little hope there, but there's you could also pessimistically view this and say it's a bad ending because there's still zombies out there. Iceland is a hellhole. Nobody knows what's going on with North Korea. Uh, there's so much bad in uh, going on, and there's always the threat of, of a war, a, of a human war between Russia and the United States, uh, again, because Russia became a theocracy and they're kind of kind of becoming expansionist, uh, which, is, which is never a good thing. So... You know, the more things change, the more they stay the same, as as the common expression goes. Uh, so, yeah, you could view it positively or negatively, and I think I think that's a that's a quality thing that Max Brooks does. That's all I have to say about this book. Um, overall, I really enjoyed it, and I'm I'm definitely going to recommend it to everyone out there. Uh, it's 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 a new classic, I would say, because it came out in the past 20 years. Uh, if you if you read the book or you simply want to sh uh, share your thoughts about what I just said, feel free to comment below. Otherwise, I bid you a pleasant day in your weird travels. Don't get bitten by any zombies.